Hey, what's going on my fellow uh, amateur astronomers and backyard astronomers? This is Kokaka 762x54R coming at you live from uh, the telescope room, the man cave, uh, from my uh, hacienda in Buckeye, Arizona. And I uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick little heads up. Um, I'm currently on my YouTube page right now. Um, uh, go ahead and processing the uh, Orion Starblast uh, 4.5 inch imaging uh, OTA review. Uh, go ahead and take the time to uh, check that out. It should be ready here pretty soon. But while I was doing that, I had to make this real quick. Um, I had to make this real. Hold on a second. I had to make this really quick uh, review, or actually not review, but I had to comment on something real quick. This is really driving me insane. Um, I'm on YouTube and I'm checking out some of my subscribers, and um, I came across one one guy, and uh, I just subscribed to him. His name is Jack uh, Hurricamp. H U E R K A M P. Okay, and I'm reading his. Um, I'm going through his uh, his channel here, and he has a a quick little review, a video of the uh, brand new Mead Instruments LX80 multi mount. That's the their brand new incarnation. Uh, that is basically it works in alt as and polar mode. Uh, that's, that appears to be the uh, direction that uh, the uh, manufacturers are going now with the uh, amateur astronomy market. Uh, people are coming out with mounts that can do everything. Okay. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up because I feel so sorry for Jack here. I was reading his um, his uh, his article here. Let me let me pull it up here real quick here. And basically, what he is doing here. <laughs> Um, let me see here. I mean, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of videos. Uh, he's got well over 200 videos, well over 700 views. And uh, this video he was doing um, was he had the new LX80 mount, and he was doing a tracking test in polar mode. And basically, what Jack was doing, he had an iPad, he had an iPad with the appropriate hardware, the program, the drivers, and everything hooked up to the uh, to the LX80, and he was attempting to track the star Vega. And on the iPad, he had a nice little crosshair diagram and stuff like that. And it was, you know, probably in the course of, uh, actually, it's right here. Hang on a second. 714 views on this. Uh, second test showing how far the scope drifts while in EQ mode and how the scope puts the target back when a go-to is performed on the target. Okay, so here's the thing. You'll do the initial, the, the initial alignment, polar alignment on a LX80 mount, okay? the star will drift and then in order to go back to it you have to go to the star so basically you can drift out of the field of view and basically then you have to uh, do a go to alignment again to get the star back into the reticle um, I'm sorry guys you know what <laughs> right, let me put it to you this way look I've been doing this for a very long time Okay, as you can see behind me, I am a dedicated Mead Instruments fan. I have an LX80 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain, okay, and I also have the LXD75 go to mount, okay. So, I mean, don't make the mistake of thinking that I'm, I'm anti Mead, I'm not. Uh, but here's the thing I'm also a realist, okay, and I also see the, uh, the direction that Mead has chosen to take. Unfortunately, Mead Instruments uh, nowadays has just, like I said, you know, it has made some really dumb decisions. Um, they're coming out with crap that is just not up to standards with amateur astronomers. If you look at Celestron, if you look at uh, Orion telescopes and binoculars, if you look at ADM accessories, Borg telescopes, um, it just all the, the hundreds of other companies out there that are making telescopes and mounts and accessories along with those mounts and telescopes, they have a very common goal, and that goal is they put their customers first. And what I mean by that is they listen to their customers' complaints, they listen to their suggestions, and they design their mounts and telescopes around that. It's because Celestron, Orion, all these other companies, probably them too, they want to keep their customers. They want to keep their customers happy because that's what keeps your business happy when people keep going back to you and buying stuff. Now, is Mead, has Mead come out with some very technological breakthroughs in the amateur astronomy market? Yes. Have they basically set the groundwork for some of the technologies that we enjoy today? Yes. But unfortunately, today, Mead, <laughs> for whatever reason, 
has just decided to go the other way, okay? So, you know, like I said, I'm reading Jack's little, uh, I'm reading his, um, his review here. I'm watching his video. It's about 2 minutes and 19 seconds long. Take a, take a chance to check it out. It's called LX80 EQ Mount Tracking Test Number 2, okay? Type that into the search engine. It'll pop up on YouTube. Click on it. Just, you'll see what I'm talking about. So basically, my, my issue is this. If Mead is offering the LX80 mount, just the mount, for $1,000, how do they expect me to go out and buy that mount and try to use it? If, if, if you can't even track a star as simple as Vega, okay, look, my Mead LX, my little LX90 right here, in alt as mode, will track Vega without breaking a sweat, okay? The LXD75 over here, let me get out of the way. The LXD75 right here, okay, with a rough polar alignment, it will track any star I lock onto and it will keep it in the field of view for at least 10 minutes before it drifts off, okay? Now, according to what Jack is telling us here, this brand new LX80 um, EQ slash alt as mount, whiz bang flux capacitor mount, can't even track a star. It drifts out of field. And me wants me to spend $1,000 on that. I don't think so, Mead. Mead, I'll tell you what. You know, I am a I am a fan of your instruments. I am a fan of your telescopes. I'll tell you what I'll do. I think I'll go ahead and stick with my LX90, and I think I'll go ahead and stick with my second hand LXD75 that I bought used. That will smoke your LX80 mount. Okay, just my opinion. That's just my opinion. I would rather keep my two telescopes right here that will blow your mount out of the water. Okay, versus going and spending a thousand dollars and being disappointed like poor Jack here, okay? Because in the end, I mean, Jack probably wants to do some uh, astrophotography, and how's he going to be able to do that when he, it, it won't even track Vega? It won't even track Vega. Another case in point, if you, if you guys get a chance, uh, go onto YouTube and talk to OpCorp. Everybody knows who OpCorp is. If you're into telescopes, you know who these people are. They are the Bible of telescopes, okay? Go to OpCorp, type them in on YouTube, and type in OpCorp tests new Mead LX80. In this video, OpCorp is testing the LX80 mount with a 10-inch Schmidt Cassegrain OTA on top of it. And they're in their showroom, and the camera's set up. You've got one of the OpCorp associates uh, running through the audio star controller, basically doing a quick little um, uh, demonstration alignment. And the power cord that goes into the mount, as it's slewing, it goes thunk. The mount was slewing, and the power cord fell out. Wow, a thousand dollar mount, and it won't even hold on to the power cord? Are you kidding me, Mead? So, I, you know, honestly, and you know, I'm not trying to sound biased here, but you know, if, if the LX80 is a thousand dollars plus shipping, if that's not even working, how do you expect me, Mead, to go out there and spend money on your LX600? with your Starlock or your LX800 imaging system with its Starlock that both start at six and eight thousand dollars respectively? No thanks. I, you know, honestly, I like those. I, you know, they're really cool. I think I'll stick with what I got right now. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, so like I said, I know I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing a little rant right here because it really ticks me off to see customers that are trying to, um, you know, buy good equipment only to get gypped and that's what's happening right now with media instruments they are gypping their own customers and honestly it's like I've told you watch my watch my videos I've made on my page there you know what you know I'm out back with my LXD 75 and I'm offering a little opinion listen to what I tell you okay Mead is slitting their own throat right now they are rushing out products that don't work they have not been tested sufficiently and they are flooding the marketplace with these products. People are buying them, and all it's doing is hurting me, because the opinions that the opinions going around the star parties and stuff like that are stay away from Mead today because Mead sucks. Mead does not offer a good product. Mead doesn't back up their customers. Case in point: Have any of you ever tried to call Mead Instruments customer support? I'm serious. I've done it several times, and let me let me put it to you this way. You will have more luck talking to the IRS with our own government, the Internal Revenue Service. You will have more luck getting something accomplished through them on the phone than you will with Mead Instruments customer service. Case in point, 
I had a problem with my LXD75 about a year and a half ago. I contacted Mead Support. I was on hold for an hour and a half. When I finally got through to somebody, they didn't even know what the LXD75 was. And this person's working for Mead. Really? Like I said, you'll have a better chance dealing with the IRS than you will with Mead customer service. So, again, don't get me wrong. You know, I, me personally, I've already told you guys, I like Mead. I grow, I grow, I have grown up using Mead telescopes. Unfortunately, today, in this day and age, for some reason, Mead telescopes is going down. I don't, I don't know what it is. It, they, they got some really bad decisions coming out of that company. They got some really bad people driving that ship. And if I was Mead, if I was the if I was the president of Mead Telescopes, uh, Mead Instruments Corporation, I would be uh, seriously uh, hauling some people into my office, and I'd be asking, "What in the hell are you people doing with my company?" That's what I would be doing, and I'd be firing people, and I would, I would be taking control of that company and steering it back into its right course because right now the way they're going, they're not going to survive long. I hate to say it, but Mead is either going to go broke, they're going to go bankrupt, or they're going to get bought out because the, some of the decisions they're making right now are just pathetic. And that's just my rant. That's, that's all I'm saying. So anyway, if you have a chance, look at, uh, look at Jack's little uh, review here on the LX80 EQ mode tracking test number two. And um, you know, form your own opinion, make your own decision. But I'm just telling you from my personal experience, from the knowledge I've gained doing backyard, uh, backyard astronomy, from owning the telescopes and actually you know, out there doing it in the field, you know, I, I'm telling you, you know, me better do something fast. and they, they better turn this around, otherwise they are going to sink, and they're going to sink really fast. So, anyway, this is Skokaki 762 by 54R, just ranting a little bit. I feel sorry for this guy, and it just, it just really, God, it irks me to see people like this that get screwed when they think they got a good mount, and it, it finds out it's junk. So, just beware. Hopefully, um... Hopefully me will be uh, listening to their customers, doubt it, but hopefully they'll fix their problems and maybe this thing will come out to be a screaming product. I I don't know. I ain't going to hold my breath. So anyway, Skullcock is 762 by 54R saying uh, peace out.